always contend that we in Miami, we are right here in what is really the ground zero of the LGBTQ rights movement. Because in 1977, that's when Miami-Dade Commissioner Ruth Schack, she proposed a human rights ordinance that would protect people here on the basis of their sexual and affectational preferences. Didn't sound like a big deal, but two weeks later, a very famous person named Benita Bryant said, if you pass this, we will take it back. We will repeal your law. It passed, and three weeks later, the churches in Miami-Dade County got enough signatures to put it on the ballot the following June, and it was repealed 70% to 30%. When the, when the people of Dade County were torn apart about gay rights, this story went viral. This story was everywhere. It was all over the United States and beyond. And for the first time, people spoke about whether or not LGBTQ people had the same rights as everyone else. It was the first time. And it was talked about at dinner tables, on the evening news, magazines, everyone had an opinion. So I really contend that that was the turning point for us coming out of the closet, so to speak, on a global level. We are going to have the first time a viable gay candidate. Watch really closely how it is that his campaign is talked about in the press, how he's judged, how he's criticized, how he's praised. Everything that occurs to him is really, in a way, what's going to occur to you. Because I think the next frontier for all of us that are part of the gay rights movement is the ways in which power is shared and distributed. And that's what's really up for grabs. It's no longer about these basic rights that we all deserve and that we all absolutely have a right to have. The courts are going to eventually decide that and they will be on our side. But what will be more difficult is the ways in which power is shared among those who have always been kept up. And Pete is going to push that right to the forefront. And what you're going to witness are those people who support and are truly supportive, and then those people who will go on the attack. One of the things that I've realized is that the higher that I went up in any kind of system, the more questioned I became about how much power I should have, particularly as an outspoken gay person. And so it's perfectly fine if you don't have a great deal of power to be outspoken. But when I was young, I was really outspoken. And then as you get up higher and higher, the constraints become tighter and tighter. And so watch for this with Pete Buttigieg, because I think that this is something that you're going to be dealing with in your own lives, and something that you're going to have to have all of the skills, all of the tactics, in order to combat it. Because it will come at you from various odd angles at odd moments, and you won't be expecting it. And that's something that we're all going to have to learn. And we're going to learn it, and we're going to be really good at it, because this is what we do. We're given like a superpower. You know, you know that, right? You know, being gay, lesbian, trans, bi, queer, we've got a superpower. Because we step outside of the norm, and we are watching all of the time. And when you're watching, you're learning. And when you're learning, you're figuring out how to make things work, because you need to learn how to make it work. Those people who don't stand on the outside of anything, they don't learn anything. They're just given things. Here. You know, here's marriage, you're straight, marry. You never think about it, you never fight for it. But we, on the other hand, have always been on the outside of things, and thus we are developing skills and strategies in order to get what we need and deserve. You'll use this power in ways that you don't even understand, and it is truly a gift. You're extremely powerful, you will change the world, and I'm so happy that all of you are here at the Los Angeles. So welcome. Thank you.